Thanks. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, good. Doug, I know we have, we have your works right here all around us, and this is the first time I've been able to see them in, in person. Well, so th this, these are, this wall is mine here. Well, not mine, mine, but you know. <laughs> but uh, these are my paintings, and there's one in, in the back, and it's, so it's a group show, and there's some other artists here. Um, yeah, so, so here we are, here they are. Okay, yeah. now where would you like to start? Would you like to start with the images on the wall? You well, let's discuss, talk about let's these talk about first, the and then we'll here. work our way sure. backwards. What would you like to know about them, Art? Well, the, the thing that strikes me immediately is how you take such a simple subject and illuminate it so mm. well. There's, the first thing I have to ask about is the technique involved. Right, so um, it's a happy accident. Uh, and what, what I was chasing when I was going through my, my career as a painter, well, first I was influenced by Hopper. And who's, everybody remembers the famous Hopper line, he loved to paint light on the side of a, of a building. And I, I, I fell in love with that idea, and I, and I really feel that that's something fun to do. I love light, I love shadow. So I look for that if I go out plein air painting. I, I, if it's just a, a vast meadow with no shadows in it, it doesn't excite me as much. So there was the Hopper thing. And then, uh, you know, I've started painting, you know, since 95. Um, so you, you have Hopper, you have all these other influences. So the last influence that I've been chasing for the past year or two years, I've been looking at Diebenkorn an awful lot. Richard Diebenkorn, you guys have probably, you've heard the name, you're sort of familiar with his work. Uh, and it, he, just, he just blew me away and it, I was at, my head was at the right place at the right time to, to sort of get it, to get excited about what he was doing. And to say, oh my gosh, you know, I can do that. Now, so that said, what was Diebenkorn doing that was so exciting uh, for me? It was the surface, it was the color coming through color. Uh, it was, here's the thing, it was a scene, it was figurative, but it was also abstract. The painting worked on two levels. Exactly right. How can that happen? I was so amazed at that. And, what we'll do in a little while is we're going to dim the lights and I'll show you some slides as to how I got to, to this point with some of the paintings I've done over the years. Um, but wow, I mean the fact that you could do that. So as I'm doing these, I'm trying to, uh, to show the light, um, to show the abstract qualities that you can find in a figurative scene, um, and also to, to let sort of accidents happen. Uh, you know, this leads us into our, our first slide. So here it is, I'm painting on this dark surface, right? Which is kind of a weird thing to do. So we have painters in the room, right? How many of you are painters in this it's room? It's a good question. Right? Okay. A few, right? So for the most part, you, you start off and you paint on a white uh, canvas. And then maybe you might use a kind of a reddish surface, like a, a transparent oxide brown, because that goes good against the greens and stuff. Um, but maybe what we'll do, Art, is I'll show you this. This I have these slides up here, which is up here is where we're going to have to look. I'm, I, I think this first painting is a, a picture that's in this uh, gallery. It's on the other side. Now, that's a weird painting to me because I did it about a year and a half ago. It's painted on aluminum. <laughs> a buddy of mine was saying, "Try painting on aluminum." So I painted a, a, a landscape scene on it, and it, it was somewhat dreadful. But, and, and, I, and at the time, I was reading about an artist named Donald Sultan. And if you've ever heard of Donald Sultan, he, he does all sorts of crazy things. But one of the things that he did that I liked is he used tar. He painted with tar. And I said, wait a minute. That's the first I've heard of that. Right? Yeah. And I said, wait a minute. I, could, I love dark, contrasty things. Let's try it. So I covered the, the aluminum with tar. I let it dry. And then I went, I had a shack idea, I painted the shack on it. Well, the paint and the terps, or mineral spirits, reacted with the tar. And it made the colors go in this kind of Andrew Wyeth territory. And I said, oh, wait. So this is what you can do when you're painting on dark surfaces. Things happen that are so much different. So before, yeah, be, go before you go to the next slide, there's just something important that I wanted to point out. Yeah. If you look at this piece here, and this is one of the most the magical things that I find out about Doug's work, look at the lower right. We've got some dried saltgrass. Very, very rarely do you see an artist handle it with such ease and dispatch. 
there's a lot of techniques for rendering something like that and he's turned it into this soft moving area where you know exactly what it is but at the same time it's a it's a scumbled effect so just talking from the, the standpoint of technique mm. it's really a masterful moment in the painting now if you look at the whole painting here you look at the stairs going up you look at the uh, the thalo blue sky that goes across the top and then down that's really a beautiful forget that you know what it is it's a magnificent abstracted canvas if you just look at the separate elements if you didn't recognize that it was a house, you know, on a beachscape. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful abstracted piece. And that's when Doug had said, these pieces work on two levels. Uh -huh. They're literal, but at the same time, they're beautifully composed abstractions. And the thing that helps that is the values, the way he breaks up those color planes and the light that just emanates off the illuminated surfaces and something that I rarely see the shadows, which are both opaque and translucent at the same time. It's this back and forth quality oh, that you. you have that's just, that's just fantastic. Well, okay, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, go that's ahead. okay. You go right, next any, one. Anytime you want to say nice things, please. <laughs> <laughs> you can go right for it. Uh, no, no, keep, keep the lights off because I'm going to go to the next one. So, so now this Deben Corn stuff gets into my head. Okay, so this came out looking kind of like an Andrew Wyeth, but I, I was really excited about Deben Corn. So then I thought, okay, let's not use tar. But I, I used oil paint and I made my own dark. Um, so when you see these darks here that I left alone, so it's basically a canvas that I stretched, a gessoed, um, and then co covered with this dark stuff. It's not black uh, because black is just so, you know, I don't know, sometimes it can be just kind of dead, you know? Dead so, as a doornail. So it's three colors that I try not to overmix. I like some shades to come through. But so this next one was a Deben corn shack. Right? It's a big mm. difference. Mm. But I, you know, I was looking at Deben Corn and I'm thinking, man, this guy really has so much more fun with color than I'm having. And I said, that's it. <laughs> I, I said, okay, what happens if I put a blue sky that's that blue, what do I want to work next to it? So suddenly this painting ha is allowing me to have some creative input. And when we talk about my plain air paintings later on, you're going to see some plain air paintings from the past 20 years. Uh, and I won't even get into it right now, but what I'm saying about this painting, that it was, this is what, the reason I, I put this painting here is because that painting led to all these other paintings. Because that painting, I was allowed to pick whatever color I wanted. I could make the water green, I could make the grass next to it, I could make it red because I thought that was an interesting and lively color combination. And uh, to tell you the truth, it was just so much more fun to paint like this because suddenly I wasn't relying on what I was looking at, I was able to paint how I felt, and I was able to paint in a way that I thought could make for a much more interesting painting when all was said and done. A much more unique and personal painting. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's something I want to explore some more. I find it really exciting. And yet I'm still tied in with my love for the Edward Hopper kind of moody subject matter that I really enjoy painting a lot. It's so much more accessible. There's a, there's a warmth to it. It invites the viewer because I think they're, they're less, the Hopper has a bit of a morose quality, yes. you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And you either get with that morose quality well, or you're on the outside. Well, when you see the slides the that are coming, Art. Okay, <laughs> no, okay. I, I, I appreciate the nice. Okay. <laughs> well, since the lights are off and since we just left that colorful shack painting, what that shack painting allowed me to do was to, to push color. So these next, these next ones here are, are paintings where I'm, you can see I'm playing with the color mm. a little bit more. Yes, we know it's a shack, but look at that sky, right? And for an artist like me, who's painted a lot of skies over the years, it was just so much fun to paint that sky. Let's see this next one. Oh, this is, this is an interesting one. Uh, this is a scene from Mountain Montauk. Uh, we were out there with our friends, who I think might be here at some point. Uh, there, we came upon a dead whale, and uh, it was a bright, bright, sunny day, probably around noon. So the, that was what I had to work with for a photo reference, but that's not where I wanted it, the painting to go. And the mood, that, that feeling, as I remember of seeing that giant whale, that's, uh, that's the mood that it was. That's, that's very interesting because what you've used here is the same technique that cinema photographers use when they want to portray nighttime, but of course there's no light in yeah, nighttime. Yeah. So if you've ever seen uh, the movie Jaws, 
when they're at twilight and night, those scenes were shot during the day, but then during the processing of the film, they dim it all the way down and it looks like nighttime. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they have all the things standing out, like the, the, the light of the whale and on the pants. So it's the same cinematic technique used to portray light at night. Right, and, and you'll notice that's a pretty big painting. I'm starting to work bigger because uh, with these colors, when you have a big painting and it has such nice color, boy, it really, it's so, so powerful. Um, this was a plain air painting uh, down in Heckscher Park, and I, I was asked to go down and be part of this paint day that they had. It was like an open to the public thing, and I was just in this deep and corn kind of mode where I wanted to push these colors. So this is the first time I did it as a plain air uh, piece. And uh, I, think it, I think it was a lot of fun. It came out nice. Let's see, let's see there's another one here. Um, this is another plein air picture of the cabana scene nearby. And this, was, this is an interesting picture to me because it started off as a drawing of one of my students in, that we had in, in the class. While she was standing there, I just did a sketch. And then after she left, I decided to fill it in with whatever colors I wanted. And uh, boy, it's so much fun to do that, you know, because it, then it becomes, then it becomes something that maybe you haven't seen before, which is not easy to do as a painter. You want to, I mean, you, yeah, you can paint things that people haven't seen before, but if you're painting realism, figurative stuff, you know, people see, you know, parks and boats and things and landscapes, and they kind of know what they look like. They're so, already so familiar yeah. with it. Yeah. So how do you make it yours? How do you make it different? That's, that's the thing. So that's, that's kind of where I've been at for the past, like, two years, year and a half, two years. Yeah. Tell us about your background. Oh. I think that's a real interesting part. Well, well, here, here they are. My, my, yeah. my. <laughs> Charles and Cornelia. I mean, it all, it all comes from, from you guys, really. I mean, honestly. And they're still support, oh. supporting you as Yeah, well. well, they're not supporting me I as mean. much as I... <laughs> Boy, that'd be nice. But. So let, let me give you the, the story. So um, we, uh, we grew up, I grew up in Huntington in, in Lloyd Harbor. Uh, Dad was the chairman of NASA Community College uh, Art Department and also a sculptor who did these large uh, public bronze works, like 40 feet long. That he, and he did everything. He hammered them and made them and, fabric, <laughs> and you know, sold them. Yeah, and he, and yeah. then he installed them, which meant that you know, my brother and I were there doing all that you know, with them. So that was great. And that was, you know, that work ethic was very uh, impressive and frightening. <laughs> so then my mom had this wonderful gallery Cold Spring uh, Harbor. in Cold Spring Harbor, mm -hmm. uh, showcase gallery, gallery of contemporary crafts, right? North American crafts or just American. American crafts? For 13 years you had that gallery. So needless to say, our house growing up was like a gallery <coughs> in itself. And it was just beautiful stuff. Now, did I understand uh, all the pieces as a kid growing up? No, but they sunk in. I, you know, I, I got an idea, an appreciation of, oh, so this is what a nice quality piece of art looks like. This is how it's presented. You know, all that became part of just what I thought was sort of normal, you know. Um, my brother was, was a toy designer. Now he, he makes paper making machines for artists that he, he distributes and he makes, fabricates and distributes worldwide. What's it called? Dave Reina Designs, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, that's the growing up part. Then I went to Buffalo State College for two years, was an art major there, and dropped out because I didn't want to become an art teacher. That's what happened. They were sort of pushing you into, okay, so now what do you want to do? Uh, you want to do some student teaching? And I said, well, I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do back then. You I always was, want to do something different. <laughs> I, you know, I liked, I liked, I liked some other things. So I ended up at Emerson College. I did mass communication stuff. Got out of Emerson College. What? I have to leave? What? You know? And uh, then I became a, a news anchor for, news anchor. of all things, right? For uh, Huntington Cable TV, which led to news reporting stuff for Channel 55, WLIG, Viacom. So that led to a job at Computer Associates, which had a uh, in-house corporate t uh, TV studio to help do all their advertising and training and stuff like that. That's where I met my darling wife, Susan. And, uh, and, we, and, and we were there many years, and they, they started to do these rolling layoffs, and then in 2006 I got laid off. And then once again, my darling wife Susan has to get into this because we decided, and you, your support was really key in this, you said, let's, let's do the art thing full time, let's see how it goes. How about that? 
Yeah. Right? <laughs> How about that? What, when, wow. when you were doing the art full time, was that also when you were working for the New York New Yorker? Oh, and, uh, uh, yeah. and, the, and the National Lampoon. I sold a couple of cartoons. After? I sold some cartoons to the New Yorker. I sold some cartoons to uh, uh, King Features Syndicate, and I sold them wherever I could. Uh, so I was always doing that. I had I had like an offbeat sense of humor. I, I liked Robert Crumb a lot. I liked National Lampoon a lot. And you know, the, an offbeat sense of humor can only get you so far in life. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, after a while, people are like, "Hey, buddy." <laughs> I recall. I, were, I recall there was a Seinfeld episode regarding Elaine trying to get one of her, her cartoons into the New Yorker, yeah. and that has got to be the ultimate thing for any cartoonist yeah. to be able to have their work published. Uh, yeah, it was exciting in the New Yorker. It was an exciting thing. Yeah. So you, it's not you, so easy to do. I'm I have sure to, it's no, not. and I say that because after I got a couple of published, it didn't happen again. And for a while, I tried, but I think I was trying too hard. So recently, The New Yorker has a new uh, cartoon editor, and they invited a bunch of us cartoonists in, and they invited me to come into their, uh, I don't know where we were, some, it was down by uh, World Trade? Yeah. And they had all of the cartoons published that we, that all the guests were there. And then one of the cartoonists said to me, this is great. I sold them one back in 2001 and they never published anything of mine <laughs> And I said, hey, okay. It, it is fickle. <laughs> what a coincidence, you know. It is fickle. It was so funny. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely. So there's a whole visual arts background. Yes. It, you, the, all the different diversions, and I think you have a brother who's, you mentioned he worked in the toy industry. That's right, and you did too. I did too. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. was the, that was uh, sort of a marine boot camp for yeah. artists yeah. in terms of uh, deadlines and uh, the oh mediums that one had to use, and I'm sure he's very familiar with it. Yeah. So I was always fascinated with how artists use their mediums to produce what they do, mm. and to see it used the way you use yours, the variety to see that those mediums used so masterly. Huh? It's, it's really wonderful to see, it's a delight. Oh, thank you, thank you. So, so I, I, even when I was at Computer Associates, I started painting in about 1995. I got interested in it. I was always drawing, right? Right? When I was Since little, five, did, is that, right? Mama, is that story true that when I was about four or five, I did a picture of me running away and I slid it underneath oh, your door? You still have it. You, you still have it. <laughs> And it had, and it made you kind of upset, right? It had an effect. Because well, I, I mean, we have, I, I, you had a, an argument. A scolded it, which is something you did that was wrong. Ah. And I sent you to your room. And that's when and I drew all that. All of a sudden, and I was in a different room, and all of a sudden, I see a little paper slip. <laughs> a piece of paper slid <laughs> under the door. And it was a picture of a little boy, of a, of, 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 you know, just a, a stick figure, really, but of a little boy with an umbrella and it rained me all the way down and told me everything I needed. Yeah. To Running away from home. Yeah. Oh, and a suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So, so uh, that, at that age, I realized, hey, wait a minute, you can get a good effect out of art. <laughs> wait a minute, this, this art thing's more powerful than just doodling. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, I bring up 1995 because right. I, I took Joe some, Riboli, Joe Riboli uh, had some weekend workshop classes, so did Christian White, and I, and I took a couple of those weekend workshops, and I got the bug, I, and I figured out how to paint outdoors. And that's what I did, a lot. I painted outdoors a lot, and it was the best teacher art, I have to tell you, because... And Susan, you can back me up on this. Remember how frustrated I would get looking at color saying, what the hell is that color? How do you do that color? I would curse out loud. It's murder. No. You know what, what I'd like to do is, uh, let me show you some of these plainer uh, pictures from Absolutely. the past. Absolutely. All right, so we, we all know this scene, right? Beautiful. So now, uh, this is 2011, right? And um, I tell you, it's so much fun to go painting outside. I mean, if you have to be prepared for it, you have to deal with bugs and people and dogs. Oh, let me tell you, I, I, I was on someone's estate. You know, you end up as a planner painter, you have to be okay with like being alone. Because you have to think, you have to be alone. I was on this estate in the middle of nowhere. A Great Dane and a pit bull come loping up to me. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, if I may. <laughs> and I was trembling because the Great Dane like an art critic was looking at my work and he stuck his big head up like in the back of my butt and I was just, I was just ignoring him, you know, and then they kind of loped off. Well, anyway, that's the story of <laughs> plain air paint. So, so here, here, you know, if you're, if you're trying to sell in this local area, and I was, right, because sales, you know, I wasn't working at CA anymore and sales was really important. Um, 
So these plein air pictures of local scenes, especially, would you know uh, reach people's heart strings, and and uh, you know they would buy them. Um, I also made prints of them and things like that. Uh, so, but that's an that's an old old one. That's from two thousand four. That's Beautiful. Ditch Plains. Yeah, yeah, that's Ditch Plains. Uh, and that, that was well, just look all at those done. Bluffs. Uh, it, it's just gorgeous. They, and the bluffs. The way it just violates that, that scene yeah. you know, with, with the color and the value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, this is a plein air picture that when I came back, I said, wow, I really painted a motorcycle? That's, <laughs> that thing seemed like it would be pretty complicated, but it came out not bad. Yeah. It came out perfect. It came out good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, you nailed it. That was, a, that was a good one. Now, I just want to, oh, if you I just go back, go back yeah. a, a, another thing that fascinates me is the way he, the way Doug handles those shadows, and I think um, yeah. uh, most artists, when they paint shadows, the rule of thumb, the traditional rule of thumb is make your shadows transparent and make your highlights opaque. That's the standard way of doing it, especially when you're doing mm. portrait work and such. And Doug is able to create the, that interplay, that dappled light, and you're using opaque shadows. Mm. And yet still, there's a, there's a, there's a transparency to it. And that's, yeah. that's, that's an amazing uh, manipulation. Well, you know, one of the things I, I learned as a painter was if you're gonna paint a shadow area, uh, put it in. Put that color in. Don't infect that area with anything else. And so, and what I'm saying is now, then when it's time to put the light next to it, that contrast is there. Sometimes I see artists yeah. and they just run all over the canvas with the brush, and then they try to fix it. They try to bring up the value or bring down the value, right. but they've always, already infected that real and estate. Forth, yeah. And I back never and did forth. that. You know, like when I painted that fender in the back that those light colors specifically went where they went and the dark colors and when they get, go together you can make the edges have some magic this is probably why and this was the most one of the most important things that i saw about your canvases the lack of struggle ah. the dispatch that you do it and when you talk about the back and forth when when we artists work on say a canvas you're trying to make the lights lighter you're making the dogs darker you're trying to get that into play that's called struggle ah. and it's the last thing in the world you want to do it's the worst thing that can happen on a canvas, yeah. and there's no struggle in these, and that's one of the oh, things that you. impressed me the most about them. Well, you know, I'm not showing you the ones <laughs> that did have the struggle, but, but, but you know, I tell you, the, the, the thing I remember oh, specifically, gosh. I remember specifically Very about candid. this painting is that I used a big ass brush in the back. You see that house in the back? How simple that is? So, that's and, the first and yet time. It's all there. And yet it was enough. It was enough, and and I thought to myself, "Wow, you can do a lot with a big brush if you if you if you think about." It. So Amazing. All right, let's keep going. Um, the way you edit those details, you'll still get the image of what it is. Yeah. But the details is so wonderfully edited. Oh, you know the thing I've learned out of doing this for so long now is um, you don't have to overdo it. Mm. In fact, if you do it a little less, you know it might be more interesting. Look mm -hmm. at these things. They're they're. You know, you could argue, what happened? He, did he finish them? Did he not finish them? But they got to a point where they were interesting. And luckily, I was, uh, you know, happy enough to say, okay, I'm going to stop. All there. And let's, let's see what happens. And they resonate somehow. All right, so they, we're going. We're going to keep going. Okay, so here's Doug. He's painting the truck. He's painting mm -hmm. down by the water in, uh, where is this? Uh, Shore Road, whatever. So w the reason I, I bring these plein air pictures up is because I had this reporter, this news reporter background. And, and that meant I went out and I looked at the sky. I looked at the green truck. I looked, and I made it you know, to be what it was. I, I mean, I might have been a little brushy in how I laid down things. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was always very accurate. This is the temperature, the heat of the day. I wanted you to feel that. Um, so, and oh, here's... If, may I? Yeah, I'm please. sorry for interrupting, no, please. I always I, see something. No, stop me. I don't if mind. you can just go back to the yeah. truck. Yeah, okay. There's another little, another little thing about we painters when we struggle with work. If you'll notice the drawing, how what's called in drawing in a painting or even just where you're working with a pen or pencil, when something is out of drawing, you could see that the artist really couldn't put it across. When something is in drawing, everything, the perspective is perfect. Take a look at that back wheel, if you would. Wheels are very difficult, they're round. When you view them mm. for the side, they're painted as ellipses. Very few artists can get those ellipses absolutely perfectly because ellipses are shifted. The axis of the yeah. longest edges is shifted on ellipses. When you look at that tire, it's absolutely perfect. And what Doug is really doing is 
He draws so well, but he happens to be doing it in paint. Mm. And Thank so you. these are just, these are really painted drawings. The drawing is all there. That's an interesting thing, yeah. I love drawing. And I, and, and I wish I could paint as, as free and as spirited as I draw. Because when you, when you draw, it's like almost signing your name. You know how nice that comes out? You don't even think about it. It just always lands so beautifully. It's spirited. And I would love to get that into the, the painting somehow. Okay. All right, so, uh, but you know, and so, Plain air painting is so much fun because you end up at these beautiful places and uh, you have a nice day and then you're really sunburned and then if, <laughs> and dehydrated and if you have one beer you're going to have a headache for two days. So. <laughs> now this bluff is also Montauk? That's Montauk, yeah, that's how Montauk. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And okay, and this, this is again, you know, down here in Stony Brook, uh, I would take the, we would take students out. I have students that we do plain air uh, painting. We also paint in my studio. We did a lot of painting in my studio because the winter time, who goes plein air painting? Nobody. Uh, and the students that I have, well, we could talk about them further down the road, but um, you know, they, they are with me and they're wonderful and I really love them a lot and, and they make me a better painter. But they're willing, they, they come to me not so they could learn how to paint in a classical you know, Florentine style. They come because they want to maybe find their own voice and, and try something new. Uh, so, so we don't do as much plein air painting as we used to do. We do a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> in, the, in studio. In the studio, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, wonderful. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. This was uh, one day in Gyrodyne. I just, you know, the best part about being a painter is that for plein air painters, you end up in these crazy, crazy places. I mean, I know I told you about that uh, Great Dane, but um, yeah, it, you're all alone and it's, it's so zen-like to do that job. I, I really, I think I'll always do plein air painting no matter what. Right. Now, when you talk about strange, just before yeah. you got into that, there yeah. was something that uh, I thought it was real interesting here, What's and up? I mentioned it in the article. You've got some prestigious awards. Oh. Some very coveted things that oh. happened to you as an artist. Do you just want to tell us briefly what, uh, oh, yeah. what you received? So uh, there, was, there was two. Um, one was I, I, I got into something called the MARC program, which was given by NIFA. New York Foundation for the Arts. Mm -hmm. And this was back in 2010. So I submitted and I got s selected. What NIFA was is they had, um, they pulled artists all throughout New York State, groups of artists, maybe 13, 14, right? And so my group, we would meet out in Riverhead at e East uh, End Arts, what was that? Oh, yeah, yeah. East something or other. Yeah, East End Arts, right. The, the idea was that we would be trained on how to talk about your art, how to be a professional artist, how to do the 30 second elevator pitch, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. And then all, it, it culminated with a weekend in New York City, all of the satellite groups came together and each one of us had to present our work in front of like 300 people and talk about it. Wow. So, you know, back then, that was, that was new and very stressful. And, but it was a good stretch, and I'm glad I did. Best thing that came out of it, though, was that I, I became friends with some wonderful, talented artists from the East End. And, you know, I love that. I, I, and my artist friends are so important to me. I really, I really like it, because that's Just that's a good something. give and take with yeah. other artists. I mean, you know, how, did, how did you and I end up meeting? Because we were at a show together. We had to sit the booth, kind of. We had to sit the show. Hello, I'm Doug Grant. Hello, I'm Mark Donovan. And, and, and that's how it happens, you know? And here we are. Yeah. It's a wonderful meeting of the minds. Yeah. And it's, the, the thing that helps is that there's, there's a generosity in your spirit uh. as a person. And I think that generosity actually comes across in the canvases. You're inviting uh. the viewer in. Really? It's generous. More generous than, dare I say, um, some of the artists, some of the bigger artists that you claim that you know you're inspired by, mm. there's a, there's a warmth. You're inviting the viewer. Oh, that's in, nice. Thank you. I, I hope that's very true. Nice. It comes across. Thank you. Yeah, I received in 2014, and this really changed my life. It was a Paula Krasner Grant uh, Award. It's impressive, isn't it? And uh, you know, I, that was really a, a big day, and that allowed me to open a studio in Setauket, on Main Street in Setauket. And we've been there, I've been there, we. It's really we, no matter what. It's All the we. time, absolutely. Oh, it's, it's a we. Absolutely, yeah. it's we. It's on, it's on. It's, du it's, it's Doug Susan. That's right, yeah. yeah. So, uh, bona fide, after the, the uh, Paula Krasner grant with your own studio, yeah. this is now your task. You're a bona fide artist and painter. Right, you know? yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's no going back. There's no going there's back now. There's nothing I can do now. There's no going back now. You know what I mean? Now. If somebody said, okay, we need you to get a real job, 
oh wow, you know, <laughs> uh, little uh, do they know how yeah. hard it is. Yes, <laughs> wait a minute. There's, there's no map. Yeah. There's no map. You just take it where you feel you need it to go. So uh, you wanted to mention yeah. the uh, strange. Let's ones. talk right about ahead. this. Yeah. So so here it was. I had all these plein air uh, pictures that I had been doing, right? And they're nice. I think they're nice plein air pictures, and they they look good, right? But I am. Um, I wanted to get into some some different galleries. I wanted to see where I could go, where how I could grow. How do you grow when you're all by yourself and you're sitting in your studio? What do you do? Anyway, uh, you does know, this harken back to what you tell me about what someone told you about yes. what type of paintings they'd like to see or they don't like to see? That's right. So yeah. this one this one gallery uh, owner was very direct with me, and he said, "Look, man." The world doesn't need any more uh, rowboat or lighthouse paintings, you know? He Leslie, said, you need to dig in and do, find yeah. your right? own thing. Same thing. Yeah. He said that. And I knew he, I knew he was right, because it resonated with me. But, you know, there it is. You were trying to show him your things. He's like, wait, man, we don't need any more lighthouse pictures. And he was so right. But, you know, back, back then, all those paintings were training and, and helping me be, be a better painter, sure. so I don't, I don't mind them. So sure. let's, let's talk about what happened after he said that. <laughs> because it gets a little strange. <laughs> all right. I know, and poor Colleen, you know, she, she loved all those nice old plays. And then I would show up with these strange things. So this is back in 2006, and that's Susan and our, uh, then our 10-year-old son, Devin. He's now 21. And this is out in Montauk, Montauk Shores, uh, where uh, my folks have had a place since, since it started in the 70s, right? Now, that's definitely from my life, that picture. It's a big, wide, 60-inch painting. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Look at the stretch that you put both horizontally yeah. and the forced uh, perspective yeah. going all the way back. What I like about this particular piece is it almost has a a Tim Burton-esque Edward Scissorhands sort yeah, of uh, yeah. community. You yeah, know? yeah, there's so, yeah. like those uh, houses yeah. are kind of like, uh, you yeah. know, it's a little California 1963. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I started to think about like, you know, our son was a little, he had his own mind and Susan had her own mind and getting them to agree sometimes and that, you know, as a kid grows up, I mean, you can read in a lot of this stuff, but I'm not gonna do that to you. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. Okay, yeah. Here's a here's a tough one to sell locally. Uh, yeah. But you know, so what's the story? All right. So that woman uh, came from a little cell phone shot that I took down at West Meadow Beach, and uh, I have this thing about bears. It's not a big thing. I'm sure I'm not alone in saying I'm afraid of bears. Come on. I mean, uh, do you want to go camping at Bear Mountain? No. It's Bear Mountain. I'm not going there. So I thought I'd combine the two. And I always like the fact that she's completely oblivious. It's terrific. You know, you have on the left, perfectly safe, sunning yourself, yeah. probably on a private beach. Right. But the, the dark background, that sort of like deep, ominous forest yeah, yeah. with the bear coming out, like two different types of worlds. Yeah. And if she would know she would be put into that situation. It just makes yeah, me smile. It's terrific, yeah. yeah. Thanks. It's almost a humor to it. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's a little like, you know, it makes you smile like, what's going to happen? Um, oh, yeah, okay. All right, so, so there's a, uh, here's a funny story. So that little Mako shark that I'm holding, I actually caught, and Jeannie was with me. We were doing a shoot out at Shinnecock where I went, I was like, hi, I'm Doug Green, we're going to catch a shark today. It was that kind of a shoot, and luckily we did. So I have this little stuffed shark from that day. <laughs> and I, I had this jacket, I had this hat, and I thought, boy, it'd be fun to put this all together. And then, you know, using Photoshop, I could take that shark in different positions and then put it all together and then I could get going, right? So this was done a while ago. So what happens? So our neighbors, you know, this, the lovely couple, the Wikes, uh, they must have been in their 80s. They're finally selling their house and he comes over to say goodbye and he says, you know, we saw you with that shark. <laughs> you know, so you have to be careful when you're doing this kind of a job. Who's who's watching? Anyway, I, I just got a kick out of that picture. Uh, that was on a cover of Dance. They like that one. Oh, here's another one where I'm sure he saw me. I had this. Somebody had given me at a garage sale. I got this uh, mannequin, and I thought this is sort of. See, now I think this is interesting, and that's why I did it um, because she sort of leaving herself and changing and doing whatever. I just thought it was an interesting kind of a feeling. Um, and, you know, it did sell. 
The painting did sell. It and says it's, oil on cigar box. It's oil right? on cigar yeah. box, right, I do that. And that's another demon corn thing. Years ago I read that he would do these abstracts on these cigar box lids, but my understanding was that he would just take the lid off the box and just go over the whole damn thing. I like right. the bo I keep the box together, I glue it closed, and that paper border becomes the frame, and you just hang them and go. Yeah, so let's see, does it get any stranger? Okay, so this is a plain air picture, right? Now you saw the other plain air pictures that I did, and they were all very uh, you know, nice and, and good. But what's going on here? Well, if any of you guys or gals grew up like I did, maybe you like to go exploring in, in old decrepit buildings. I don't know if you did that when you were a kid, but I did. I used to love poking around and, and exploring and getting into all sorts of trouble. So this is the back of the beverage center that's uh, right, right uh, here on 25A near the BP station. And I went back there and I thought, this has such a feel to it. And yet I could paint it as a plain air picture. And lo and behold, somebody bought it. They saw it on the internet. Hmm. Who knows? Who knows, right? Here's a funny thing I'm going to tell you I heard the other day. Tell me if this makes sense to you. It was, they were talking about writing. And somebody was giving someone advice saying, don't write for everybody. Write for somebody. And I thought that could relate to painting. You don't paint for everybody. You can't paint, please everyone right. with the way you're painting paint what you're for, doing, right? Paint for you, maybe paint for a couple of your crazy friends. That you Paint for your tribe. Paint for your people that have your sensibility. Very good advice. And I thought so. You know, yeah. so that's what that's all about. So I call these a straw. Oh, this is a strange one, not yeah. right? So, you know, these are, there's some paintings you paint that you're going to own for a long time. <laughs> and uh, that's definitely uh, well, going to be one of well them. Well put. Yeah. So, well so guys, here's the story. I'm, Susan and I are down at the grist mill. You know that beautiful pond, the beautiful geese, the pictures, the weddings. These four guys walk by with these masks. I don't know what they look like. They just walk by. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need to take your picture. And, I, and the way, the shot that I got, doesn't that look like some album from, I don't know, eight, 1985 or something? It just, it's just so funny. And they're teenage boys, you know, and you know how, so I start reading into this stuff how, well, never mind, I'm not going to do that to you. Anyway, I just thought it was a fun picture, and uh, who knows where it's going to end up. I do. It's going to go, it's going into, the Art League of Long Island has a show coming up, in fact, I have to deliver it next week, called The Big Picture. So that, if you are, guys are going to the Art League within the next, I don't know, two weeks or so, you'll see it. That is a big, that's a big picture. That's a, about 60 wide. And they're local kids, I think, that are folks. And we don't know who they are. I don't know, but they just, they make me smile. I don't know. Now, uh, this manipulated surfaces, yes. if you want to talk about it, you'll yeah. discuss the techniques yeah, that sure. you do and how you get there and, and the different surprises yeah. that these techniques bring. Okay, sure. Right ahead. All right, we'll hop in. We'll turn the lights up one more time. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, you know, you paint these landscapes, but what else can you do? But, you know, there's a, let me tell you something. There's a lot of really good plein air painters out there. I mean, if you look. So the competition's crazy. And, uh, and I keep saying to myself, well, what, what can I bring to the table that's going to make my work interesting to me and stand out? So I started to manipulate the surfaces. I started to do whatever I could. So, of course, I, I use these old cigar boxes, you know, and uh, that one's done on a dark surface. And that's a, a woman by the name of Brooke who we, I painted inside the Country Corner Pub. Does everyone know the Country Corner Pub? <laughs> Let me tell you guys, that is my favorite pub. That's a pub. That's like going back in time. That's a, I love that place. And, so, and they let me paint in there. How about that? So this picture I, I pulled because, you know, there's a psychological thing I was chasing as well. Sometimes, I don't know if anyone else feels like this, it seems like everybody else in the world has got it going on and you don't. <laughs> and that's what I was trying to show in that picture, that she just could not figure out how to get to that, that raft. And if she did get to that raft, what, what if, if she'd be even welcome. So I, I tried to catch that kind of a mood. I always liked that painting. Um, okay, so we, we move on, and this is another painting that, uh, you know, these little cigar box paintings, they don't sell for a lot of money, but th this painting took like two or three days just to do this, and doesn't that sound crazy? Wow. I mean, it's just a, it just took a long time, but I like it. it the colors are nice. beautiful. Oh, they thank really you. are. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's got like a hopper feeling, right? Yeah, it really does. Yeah, that, yeah. Those illuminated shadows, from the reflected light. Yeah, it's yeah. just beautiful. I like that one. Uh, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so I call this Dr. Davis. Pam, Pam Davis, and I knew each other since forever, since Lloyd Harbor Sc Elementary School. Her parents uh, passed away. So They're closing up the house. She said, "Come on over. We got some stuff you might want." In the dining room was this picture of this gentleman. She said, you can have that. I said, isn't that a relative of yours? She says, no, my dad found it and he hung it up in the dining room. <laughs> and everyone thought, <laughs> you know. So I took it and I said, well, what can I do with it? And I said, you know, this guy looks like he could be listening to music. So I painted the earbuds on it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, somebody bought it. <laughs> right? And I really, and I just, I just, that painting just makes me, sometimes, you know, you've got to crack yourself up. <laughs> you know, you can't. Here's another one. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I was in Michael's, and as you walk through Michael's, they have a, a shelf for all, all these little animals, and this damn pig just caught my eye, and I turned around, I'm like, all right, you son of a gun, come on, and I took him home, and I said, well, I'll just put him in this, so this is a painting of me playing the guitar, and him listening to music. And it sort of reminds me of William Sidney Mount, you know, like how he was, <laughs> like he, he, the guy hears the fiddler. You know, so that's yeah. what's going on. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Is that, because look at the expression on that pig's face. He's so like, what's going on here? I mean, <laughs> that was a good, that was a good one. Yeah. what's up with the coffee grounds? So he's standing, I wanted it to look like dirt. No, no, he's, the pig is actually, I glued the coffee grounds onto the thing. It was a good picture. I, if I could do it again, you see above Doug's head uh, that the, it's a box. I painted it into a box. So what happens is that part, the upper part of the box casts a little bit of a shadow, yeah, yeah. which right. I so didn't like. But the actual place, it's the shadow. Yeah, of the, the top yeah. Of the box. So I think if I were to do it again, I would rethink it. But I, I'm glad it came out, and, and that's that. And then, oh, this is an interesting uh, picture. Right. So um, acrylic. Uh, if you ever used acrylic paint, it dries really fast. So what happened with this picture is I had a big photo, I made a big photo of this uh, woman who, I took a picture of this woman in the, uh, in the water, and I put a grid on it, right, that mimics the grid that you see there. And then what I did with the canvas was is that I covered up all of the canvas except for one rectangle, and I would just paint in there. And then I would move on, I wouldn't look, in other words what I'm saying is I wouldn't look at the picture. I would only look at that rectangle, and that's why this picture is all jumbly. And to me, it, I always liked it because it felt like a painting of time more than a painting of a person. It had that kind of, I don't know, some quality that I, I, just, I just really liked a lot. So there's that. And uh, okay, so then this one hmm. is a manipulated surface because it's three canvases of uh, an old friend of mine who, you know, I, I don't know whatever happened to her. If, I don't know if she's still alive or not, and so that's what I was trying to show in this painting. And, and so it's a transit. It's really a painting of what happens with memory. You know, have, you have a memory of someone, and uh, over time it sort of fades. Now to get that middle uh, picture of her blurry like that, I had to paint her just like that first picture, hmm. which you know took some effort because it's pretty tight. And then I had to take a big brush and wipe it. And so, having never done this before, it was a bit of a gut check. But it, it, I liked it. It came, out, it came out nice. And so there's that. And then, ah, so, uh, yeah, Susan's <laughs> holding her eyes. So, you know, if you have a teenage son, they have, they have friends. They get into, like, smoking pot for just, you know, there's that stage that every parent has to go through, it seems, these days. And in going through my son's camera, cell phone camera, I saw this one picture, and I said, that would be great on this cover, this book cover. <laughs> and so I painted that kid who, who has the t-shirt that says, this is what awesome looks like. And uh, on that, and that book, and somebody bought it. So go figure. And then, oh, this, uh, yeah, his parents. So now this, this is a manipulated surface in the sense that what you see here are several layers of, of acetates. Of, uh, so in, uh, in other words, on one layer would be, let's say, his flesh tone. The next layer would be his yellow shirt. The next layer would be maybe the camera. Or the, the, the way back la layers would be those uh, abstract colors. And then uh, working my way up. And then I would secure it because acetate is a strange thing. You can't really glue it, right? Because it it's plastic. It doesn't like glue that much. 
So I ended up using uh, magnets to, to position it. So on one hand, I really like it. It was really popish. It was really cool. But you know what? It was too shiny for me. It had that kind the of... The surface itself. The surface yeah. itself was a little too... Get, you know, Which is popular now in a lot of paintings oh, where they just pour the... The, the resin. The, the resin, the clear resin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, done, I've done my share of yeah. resin pours. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then this is the last uh, slide that we have. So this is what I call a, a strip painting. This is Ditch Plains Beach again. And you see how we have rows here, right? Uh, you see the sky, how it works. Those are all bands going across. So I, I went to Staples... And I said, I have this photo. Can you make it the exact size of my canvas, which is like 38 or 40 wide? And then I cut it into these bands. And I would put, all, put away all of the bands except one. I could only look at one band. So I really had to paint just one and a half inch by 39 inch wide thing. And it, it all keyed together, and it made this kind of interesting jumble uh, that I liked at the time. Yeah. What I'm, what I'm so surprised at, and I'm, I'm sure you share this feeling, Doug has explored a lot of different mediums and styles. And uh, in that exploration, we haven't seen the ones that you don't like, we see the ones uh, that you yeah. do like. Yeah. But the exploration is just fantastic. Thank and, you know, I could allude to a lot of different things uh, in each of the works. Your work with acetate, which yeah. is the way we used to actually produce four-color artwork on toy packaging. We'd actually take, if we wanted to reproduce, uh, say, someone's face, uh. we couldn't do it. It was too expensive to do four-color process. So on acetate, we would lay out each color, and right. they would then photograph and print each color. Oof. So you were guessing at the skin tone. Yeah. And uh, it's just a very neat effect in the end. It's got a great pop color feel to it. Yeah. Um, the, the second thing that, that surprised me so much is the, the depth that you have in your paintings, oh. the absolute depth. You know, nothing is on a front plane as in modern contemporary work where they bring everything to the front. Oh. There's a real depth to this work, and mm. that's, that's a joy to see. I wonder if that's from all that plain air painting. It must be. You it know? must be from actual experience. There's two things, yeah. and they go back and forth again, which is great. I think if there was a signature for our talk tonight, it's the back and forth of what you do. You know, the real and the fantasy, the opaque, the transparent, right. uh, the depth, the, everything in the foreground. The first thing is the question, what advice would you give your younger uh, self? Oh, if I could talk to my younger self? Yes. <laughs> Oy vey. Um, well, I would say don't worry so much about things. I would say be your best. Good advice. You know, I would, and I would, uh, I would say try to live your life in a balance so you're... You're physically strong, mentally strong, spiritually strong. All those things help me. If I behave myself in a certain way, the muses line up and everything goes very well. That's how I, I, I don't know if everyone has their own code of life, how they, no. how they approach their life day to day. That's how I do it. Right. I don't do it great all the time. <laughs> I'm aware no, you of it. can't do it great all the time. <laughs> but I, 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 would say, um, I would say, you know, work hard. Surround yourself with really smart, talented people. I once asked a guy, uh, I was painting on this estate nearby. He was a very wealthy man. And he was sort of in the end, uh, end years of his life. And I, have, I had to do his portrait. They asked me to do a commission of him. And I said, so what's the secret of success? And he said, hang around with really smart, lucky people. Don't hang around with people that have bad luck. Exactly. <laughs> Wow. Exactly. Wow, right? Sage advice. Yeah, that Very was good. Sage that advice. was good advice, yeah. So that's the past. Now, with all of this experimentation yeah, and yeah. what you like to do, where do you see yourself going with the art? Is it more experimentation, or are you going to revisit the things that you've already done? I'm interested you... in these right now. Yeah. I want to see where I can take this. I, I'd like to see how much more uh, abstract I can pull out of, I call it figurative, but reality, what we what we see. How can I take what I see and find the abstract in it? And I'd like to see if I can incorporate some more loose drawing and gestural things into it, more life into it. Um, if, I, if I embark on being a little strange again, you know, with all this cartooning background, I have some art friends who have said, what's wrong with you? Why don't you put your cartoons into these paintings? You know, people are doing all this graffiti stuff. What's wrong with you? And I think, you know, son of a, you know when you, when you think, uh, the guy's probably right, I probably should do that. So if it's I have, you. I, ha I have to figure out how to make that me and make it something that, right. you know, you make these paintings, and if, 
If they don't sell, and I know all my painting friends in here know, if they don't sell, you live with them. That's right. So you better really that's like right. them. <laughs> you know, you're going to be looking at them. They will your house. Yes. I know. So that's. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know. They had great experiments, but you know, they just didn't find the right person behind it. Yeah. But you never know. They could sit for years as long as someone has access to it online. Yeah. You'll find the right person for it. I don't. I mean, I love to have sales and paintings. That's great, but I don't worry about it as much as I used to. It that's doesn't good. seem like it. That's a great. It doesn't maturity. seem like that's helping at all. Let's just paint. Let's make yeah. these really good paintings and let the paintings do what the paintings need to do. What they're going to do. Yeah. Right. Thank you all for coming tonight. This yeah, was. I hope you, it was everybody. as enjoyable for you as it was for me. Thank you. Um, thank you.